Why don't we have a breathalyzer for testing COVID-19? Well, there are some companies overseas that are working on that. Does it work? How does it work? And will it ever come out? Let's talk about it. We have Cam Wilson joining us from Crikey and Natasha Gillizo from the Australian Financial Review. Just walk me through what's been announced currently. I guess one of the benefits of COVID producing a bit of a wartime effort in the virus and health industry is that there's these other innovations breaking through, one of them being this idea of being able to detect disease from our breath, which is pretty cool. I haven't seen one of these devices myself, but two companies, Breathamix and Silver Factory Technology, are pretty pumped that they're getting closer to being able to detect COVID-19 from a breath test rather than the nasty throat swab that most of us have probably experienced at least once so far. See, I was really banking on COVID sniffing dogs as the next evolution of this technology. So it's kind of disappointing that this is where tech companies have gone. Cam, (laughs) I mean, look, it's one thing for them to announce it, but I mean, what is the underlying science here? Like, how is it supposed to actually work? It's less about detecting COVID itself and more about detecting uh, other signals in your breath that suggest you have COVID. For instance, I think the Spiro nose, which is one of the promising candidates, it looks for how much methanol you have coming out of your breath, which is kind of a sign of how good your digestion is going, and other indicators of how much inflammation you have, which can all be told just through a breathalyzer. So they use that to figure out, they're like, well, you have you know these kinds of chemicals coming out at the moment, and that is pretty comfortably suggests that you have COVID at the moment. And I think what they found was, like the one that I mentioned, was about 98% uh, successful at finding uh, when someone did have COVID. It did have a lot of false uh, positives, which means that they would often get test results coming back saying that you had something or you might have something, but you didn't. But I think the, the kind of, you know, you'd probably rather have it be overly cautious about catching COVID than less. Look, it's worth pointing out none of this technology is necessarily out in the marketplace. We don't know if it necessarily works. We're just trying to get a sense of what might be coming down the pipeline. You'd have to assume that if you're using sort of secondary markers, there'd be an efficacy issue there, right? It doesn't necessarily confirm the existence of COVID-19. It confirms the existence of things that are similar to COVID-19. You'd you'd have to consider that there'd be that component, right? Yeah, exactly. And and there are some candidates which are uh, testing directly for COVID, but I think that is a, uh, it seems to be a more difficult process. So in the UK at the moment, they have a lot of these 15 minute um, tests that you can kind of do at home that get sent out for free and people are doing them all the time. And similar to what we we kind of deal with here, you know, there are kind of false positives, but the idea is you'd rather be overly cautious and be like, hey, you might not be okay, um, then let something go through. We're doing something not too dissimilar at the moment, like temperature checks, which happen um, at stores. Like I've been rejected from one, not because I had COVID, but because I had just been for a run. But the idea is you'd rather be safe than sorry with these kinds of things. And and it allows you to do further investigation, but the very least kind of stop um, any potential breaches, hopefully. Mm. Uh, There is a great video doing the rounds at the moment of a woman trying to enter her building and it's an automated uh, temperature test, Natasha, and it basically is rejecting her because it's hot, it's 38 degrees out and so they won't pick up her temperature. There is a kind of like mildly humorous element to that, but on the flip side, it's sort of interesting. Uh, It is this example of science and technology also forming this legalistic lawyerly function, right, and actually enforcing the rules. And I think if those tests get it wrong, it's actually pretty serious, especially if you think about that could mean people can't, yeah, get into their, their home building, go into an office. And whilst I guess there is an argument for better safe than sorry when it comes to accuracy of detecting diseases, COVID-19 obviously being the most topical one right now, I actually think that the bar should be pretty high before these diagnostic tools come out to market, especially if, you know, a false positive results in some other negative consequence for that individual. All right, there is lots more of this in the podcast of Download This Show. You can find it wherever you get your podcasts.